Hello and welcome to A Tribe Called Health. The Tribe convenes weekly for a roundtable discussion on health, fitness, and sustainable living. We're about to get started, but first a disclaimer. The information on this broadcast should not be considered medical or legal advice. If you need medical or legal advice, speak to a doctor or a lawyer. If you are a doctor or a lawyer and need health or fitness advice, get in the tribe. On today's show, we welcome the founder of Primal Bliss Nutrition and the mom behind Joshua's Lunch, Katherine Koss. She's here to talk about how a busy mom of two raises healthy primal kids. Turn off the TV, stop throwing food, wipe that smile off your face, and do not make me turn this podcast around. This is A Tribe Called Health. My name is Joe Rignola of wellnesspunks.com, and with me, as always, Eric Hulse of ericholse.com. What's up, Eric? Hey. I have to stop saying, as always, because it's like, you're lately, John just isn't here. I know. Bummer, right? Yeah, so we... He's John, a busy guy. A busy he guy. is. He had to take a last-minute client, so um, we'll, we'll let him slide this time, but um, it's getting kind of annoying because we, <laughs> we miss John. Um but that's you could always find John Randalls and his lovely fiance Barbara at sexfoodandkettlebells.com. Yeah. So Eric, what's going on? What's new, man? Um, this was my first Memorial Day weekend without drinking. <laughs> oh, because I'm wow. doing like this, yeah, like the that's 90 right. days of no alcohol or sugar or anything. No and, fun. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> wah, 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 wah. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, actually, right. you know, it wasn't. It it was. It was totally fine. Like I was, I was DD, and it's always mm -hmm. fun to watch other people get like wasted, and you're yeah, totally true. fine. And you're just like, true. oh, wait until tomorrow morning. Yeah. Well, yeah. I have, I have, I have a very big announcement. Oh yay! I feel like I, ha I got the first sort of episode out of the way today, so I feel like I can talk about this now, and it's also fitting that Catherine's on because she's going to be a part of this. Right on. I am producing uh, what I'm calling the primal cooking workshop, which is going to be a series of probably 15 workshop videos teaching people, you know, uh, the, how, to, how to cook real food, basically. Um, and so Catherine's going to be uh, one of our primal chefs in that. I did a, um, a cooking session today with George Bryan of Civilized Caveman Cooking, which went really well. It was a ton of fun. He, he, uh, he taught us how to cook. Um, it was bacon wrapped pork mm. chops and it was out of this world really good really really good so it's like we had some pork on pork action going it was good <laughs> it was really you good no i did that i did that once and i posted a picture to my facebook just to be mm -hmm. like obnoxious i was like yeah i said something like pork on pork or something <laughs> like that and, <laughs> and people it was like half and half Half of the people were like, right on, that's awesome. Yeah. And half of the people were like, ew, that's so gross. Really? Yeah. I don't understand what's wrong I, with that. I don't know. I don't God. think they're part of my page anymore. They're Probably like, not. Yeah, if they don't get that. Humor. Yeah. yeah, no, if they don't get that, then, you know, they're just, they don't belong on, on any yeah. of our pages. <laughs> totally. So, all right, before we uh, get too, uh, too far off track here, um, Eric, why don't you read our guest bio? Yes, okay. Uh, Catherine Koss is the founder of PrimalBlissNutrition.com. She has an undergraduate degree, has an undergraduate degree in movement science and master's degree in rehabilitation counseling. She's also a breastfeeding counselor and has started a study, started studying to be a certified nutritional therapy practitioner. Her passion lies in understanding food and the profound effect it has on the mind and body. Welcome. Hi. Yeah, <laughs> welcome, Catherine. Thank you, Eric. You 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 do such a wonderful job reading those. You... Yeah, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> honestly, it's uh, I yeah. practice. I have to yeah. practice like eight thousand times before we start rolling. So I, I don't, and I still, as you can see, still screw it up. So <laughs> I work with kindergartners all day. So I'm I'm reading like cat. Oh yeah, people, you know, you're on like a first grade reading <laughs> yeah. level. 
So oh, my man. mind kind of reverted back to that. Gotcha. It's all good. It's all good. And so. I have a kindergartner, so I know how that is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a 16-month-old, so I'm, uh, you know, uh, I'm having trouble even finishing words at all lately. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah. <laughs> I can imagine. I, I I can say my ABC. I can say ABC now, though. So that's good. I'm, there I'm you go. <laughs> So, Catherine, um, we always start out with uh, asking our guests how you got started on this journey, um, how you, uh, you know, what you're, you're running this blog, uh, Primal Bliss Nutrition, and have a, a really popular Facebook page. So how did you get started in all this? Well, it's, it started back in, gosh, like 2011. I was eating what I thought was a healthy diet. I was eating a lot of um, sprouted grain breads and almond butter and um, a lot of gra a lot of legumes and what you know what I thought was as we're taught to be a healthy diet and I was having horrible stomach pains um, almost gallbladder attacks every night and it was to the point where I you know it was getting really bad so I went in and, and had a thorough checkup and I was diagnosed with several autoimmune diseases um, celiacs Hashimoto's thyroid, um, what was the other one, Sjogren's syndrome, so just a lot of all autoimmune diseases, all that kind of dwindle down to gluten. So doing my own research because the, you know, the Western medical communities really pushes medications versus um, following a, a different lifestyle. So I cut all the gluten out of my diet and noticed a huge, a huge change. Um, I started, all my autoimmune markers went way down, I started to feel way better, but I still had to deal with the um, blood sugar issues where I was, you know, still eating, I guess when you, a lot of people when they first switch to a gluten-free diet, they buy a lot of the processed gluten-free foods, thinking mm -hmm. that it's going to make a difference, um, the gluten-free breads, the gluten-free packaged um, desserts, and I was still having issues with being hungry constantly and getting shaky between meals so I researched more and more and, and switched to the paleo type primal because I love cheese <laughs> <laughs> diet lifestyle and um, it made such a huge difference I feel amazing now um, my autoimmune markers are way down um, and so I wanted to be able you know I wanted to help other people be able to see these same changes in their diet and um, the, the health effect it can have. Um, I've always been interested in health and nutrition, um, but definitely was unaware of this lifestyle. I kind of had that same mindset that a lot of people have, oh, you're cutting out a major food group. And until mm -hmm. I did the actual research myself and realized that no, grains aren't really a food group, um, right. <laughs> <laughs> and that we can survive eating this way. And, and just the, you know, it's so amazing the difference in how you feel um, mm -hmm. emotionally, physically. I suffered through through undergrad and grad school. I had really bad anxiety, um, and it's you know after going gluten free, the anxiety completely went away, wow. which is just amazing. So I think just a lot health wise, it's made such a huge difference on my own health that I feel like I really wanted to help other people. And then having children and knowing the, my history of autoimmune disease, I didn't want to have my children have to you know, go through the same issues. So I think that's why I also kind of focused on raising primarily inspired children. Awesome. And I also, um, I'm big on breastfeeding and um, baby wearing and kind of primal type um, mm -hmm. raising your children. So I wanted to kind of focus all around on having raising primal children. Awesome. How long awesome. after you um, cut gluten out of your diet did you start feeling um, better? Not very long. I mean, I, I noticed a huge difference. In fact, within a couple of weeks, if I had it, I felt I would have those same. I was literally like buckled over in in pain, almost to the point where I had to go to the hospital. So. And it's funny when, you know, when they, they did the, um, the, the, the hardest diagnosis to deal with was the thyroid because there's so many different hormones that come into play and there's so many different things that you have to put, you have to get under control when it comes to the thyroid. Um, 
now I was just lost, completely lost my train of thought. <laughs> so it happens to us all the time. Don't, don't yeah. worry about it. <laughs> but the um, but um, realizing, I guess my my point was realizing that the effect that gluten has on the thyroid, and that the Western medical community, when they called me to give me my diagnosis of Hashimoto's, they said. Um, we're just right now your thyroid because my TSH was was within a normal range. They said your thyroid is is fine for now. When it when it starts to decline, when you when it starts to get out of the normal range, then we'll put you on thyroid medication. And that was the extent of it. So I did my own research. You know, I spoke to a local chiropractor and a, you know some alternative uh, medical professionals and realize the effects that gluten has on the thyroid and soy and and those type of things and made those changes and now my thyroid is functioning within a normal level and that's yeah. something that most people are like spend years dealing with struggling with weight issues struggling with the swings between hyper and hypo struggling like all these thyroid struggles that just by making these small changes in your diet can make such a huge impact is I just there's so much information that I want to share that I feel like is so important yeah that's something we I, you know I see a lot of um, the the labs that uh, traditional doctors will run uh, don't really tell the whole story particularly with thyroid so you, they probably ran like the uh, TSH and it was in its quote-unquote normal range right yes yes but it was probably and, high normal yes and they yeah. and also my the um, the markers for autoimmune thyroid were were there, so I was still diagnosed with autoimmune thyroid. But because my TSH was normal according to them, oh everything's fine. But they didn't run my T3 or my you know my reverse T3, my T4, any of the the labs that really tell the whole story between cortisol and thyroid. They didn't really run those labs. Mm -hmm. So I actually saw a different, um, more holistic based doctor who ran those labs, and I was able. To understand my story a little more and know what kind of changes I needed to make. So sure. the thyroid is huge. I mean, it's yeah. there's. I I feel like it's so huge in our society and so under. I guess understood. I feel like so many people are on thyroid medication when when um, changes in the diet can make such a huge um, impact and huge difference. Yeah, absolutely. Do you remember what the upper range was? I'm trying to remember. I think conventional medicine says it's like five, but the the real upper limit should be like three point five or yes. something like that. Yes, and yeah. mine was, I want to say three, okay, three something. But so it was within what the the, me, the Western medical community considers the normal range. Mm -hmm. But it was, you know, definitely concerned to me. And so right. I, you know, I I did my own research, and that's what I try to advocate for people too is to do your own research. You know, and try to get a, a full understanding of everything. A lot of times, I think people see um, Western medical doctors as knowing everything and yeah. just having all the mm -hmm. answers. And sometimes that's not, you know, that's not always the case. Sometimes they can be great, but um, I think it's important to do your own research and try to gain an understanding of what you're dealing with and find yeah, your own yeah. answers. Totally, totally. So, um. Let's talk about your kids. You've got two two little boys, right? Yes. Awesome. Awesome. How, how old are they? They are three and six. Um, the three-year-old is turning four next month. Is that Joshua? Jonah is turning four. Joshua Jonah. six. Oh, yeah, okay, Joshua's okay. in kindergarten, and he's the one who I share his lunches every day. Very, very cool. Very cool. He, he would be <laughs> my favorite student. <laughs> oh, yeah. he's fun. He is. They're both fun. So. so, so what made you what made you decide to to start like this series of photos on your on your Facebook page, which are like wildly popular, um, sharing sharing his lunch? You know, I just did one day, and then it had such a huge response that I figured I'd keep you know keep sharing it. And I actually became an affiliate with Planet Box, so now it <laughs> now it behooves nice. me to share it. <laughs> yeah, no, it's such it's it's inspirational <laughs> for yeah, sure. So uh, and it and it helps me too to stay honest and to you know to try to keep providing quality food for them because mm -hmm. it it's really hard um, culturally with with young children. Yes. That's has the hardest got, part. Has he? What has the response been? You know, with his friends. 
Well, being in kindergarten, it, it hasn't been too difficult because, um, the, you know, they're all just, everything's so new to all of them. Nobody really, you know, I kind of had lunch with him a couple of times and no one really says anything. They all just kind of like eat their lunch and giggle and, you know, do their yeah. little silly it's conversations sweet. and stuff. Yeah, it's really innocent and sweet. I'm sure as he gets older, but I'm hoping because I started him at such a young age that he will just be used to this being what he has for lunch and not, you know, not ask for those changes. You know, my, my brother teaches his kids to call, instead of healthy food, he calls it strong food. This is your strong food, you know? And I think that that has such, a, it's a different, it takes on a different appeal, you know, than healthy. Sometimes when you, you hear, kids hear healthy, they're automatically like, ah, you know, like their brain turns off. But yes. if you say something like, this is your strong food, you know, then, and if he, I don't know, it, it, it it's something that you would eventually like lean on to him or teach or whatever. Yes. But you know, I'm if totally he's telling other kids, yeah. this is my strong food, this is gonna make me strong and healthy, you know, this is real. That's exactly there's there's several things that I do. I try to explain to them I try to teach them um, how different foods affect their body. Like when they when they ask for things that I know are less than ideal for them, I you know, I'm not a hundred percent stickler. I can't I, they can't live in a bubble. And sadly we live in a culture where processed food is, is a part of everything. Yeah. You know, um, the health educators that come to the school, they're pushing Mich um, Michelle Obama's agenda of whole grains. And so the kids are being taught that whole grains are healthy. And, you know, every single thing that you go to, every birthday party, every um, family, every gathering, all everything that ha involves children involves processed foods. It's just, it's sad, but it's how it is. So it makes it really challenging as a parent who is understands the, the profound effect food has on their body, but and wants to educate them, but also knows, you know, I know culturally the challenges that I face. So I try to teach them that every the effects that each food has on their body like when they're munching on baby carrots I'll say this is really good for your eyesight this is gonna help you see well because of the vitamin A in these you know I try to kind of think about the different and and when they're having their meat I say oh this is muscle food this is gonna make you have big muscles like your brother and you know I just try to play up the mm -hmm. healthy foods that I offer them and, um, you know, it just, it's really hard, but I do the best I can within the context of our culture. And I try yeah. to stress that, like, you, they can't live in a bubble when they go to, and the other thing is they learn, too, when they don't have it at home. Um, Joshua went to a friend's house, and he, they had Doritos, and, you know, Doritos <laughs> are like crack for a kid. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, totally, yeah, 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 yeah. And so he was like devouring that bag of Doritos because we never have that at home. But he came home and he literally threw up. And wow. he felt sick to his stomach and he was like, I never want those again. <laughs> so I think when their body's used to having real food, even though the other stuff is tempting, it kind <laughs> yeah. of makes them feel sick. But yeah. I, I think that's a great lesson because you as a mom, you could say so much in the terms of, no, don't eat this, don't eat that. And they might just do it anyway because, you know, that's what kids do. They test those boundaries. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's great that he did it on its own. And I was he, looking around. I don't know where John's not here, so yeah, I, I know, right? his phone is ringing. <laughs> that was me. I just, it was actually a solicitor, so I picked up and hung up. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> every, every, almost every, yeah, almost every episode, John gets a phone call. Yeah. But, uh, oh I was like, wait goodness. a minute. John's like, but, <clears throat> yeah, I, I think that he got a physical response that was unpleasing. So mm -hmm. now it seems as though he may associate that with Doritos, Doritos, which I think is it's a much stronger comparison than when if you were to say something and mm -hmm. say, no, yes. no, don't yeah. do that. The hardest part too is there's literally like children are bombarded with um, with this in every single area of their life because in our culture, there's so many people that deal with obesity, so it's such a focus in our culture on diets and mm -hmm. um, the obesity epidemic and health and nutrition and this and that. And I feel like it, it's almost overwhelming to them because they're, they're sh like from such a young age, it's literally like in their face. So I try mm -hmm. not to focus, I try not to put too much stress on them. 
but I try to explain to them where, you know, the important things like where our food comes from. We visit the farm, we stop at the farm and we buy our mm. eggs at the farm and we buy um, the raw milk at the farm. And we try to, I try to teach them the difference. Actually, my three-year-old just had a field trip to, um, a, I guess they call it a CAFCO type farm where they raise the cattle yeah, feeding, a concentrated um, animal feeding operation. The cow, yes, yeah. yes, and yeah. they're, and and you know, as we were riding through it, this was the ironic part: is there was huge fields of grass all around this mm. farm, but the cows were literally all in one little barn, like six hundred cows. Oh wow! And they were standing, you know, in their feces, and they were eating their grain, and I was horrified. <laughs> but and that was a again. field trip. Yes, it was a field trip to visit a farm. So wow. this is what they're learn. This is what they're being taught as what farms are now. Right. And oh, wow. nobody else really sees the. Problem I don't know. I guess yeah. sees the problem in it. Yeah. But he did. He was like, <laughs> "Oh my goodness!" <laughs> I think we should put the solicitor on the on on the podcast. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, still like a re still like a reverse prank phone call. <laughs> I'm just gonna let it answer. <laughs> I think that's my sister actually. <laughs> Oh, it's fine. You can answer it. Yeah, totally. So, hey, sis. Laura, I'm in the middle of my my um interview with the tribe call help. Can I call you back? Hey, okay. Laura. They're hey, all Laura. saying hi to you. <laughs> <laughs> They're all saying hi to you. <laughs> she says hi. <laughs> okay, I'll talk to you. That's funny. That is funny. She would keep calling too. <laughs> oh, we're we're totally too. keeping that in too. Yeah. Yes, when you um, when you come visit, we'll we'll definitely uh, I'll have my sister come too because she's fun. Yes. I cannot <laughs> wait. Oh for my gosh, we will have so much fun. Very cool. So okay, so let's start. Let's yeah. talk about cows and poop again. Yeah. So anyway, yeah, that that you know, to the children, this is this is what they're being taught as as what a farm Normal. is. But yeah. when I was growing up, I grew up literally with lots of farms around me, and the cows were always outside eating grass. You know, that's just what they were doing. We used to go pet the cows. We used to go feed them grass. We'd go to the to the to get the ice cream from the farm, and it was all you know, 100% grass fed. It was just the norm. And, and I'm not that old. <laughs> Someone actually referred to me as middle aged, and I was horrified. Oh, no. <laughs> God, if you're if you're middle aged, then I'm probably ancient. <laughs> 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 you know, that was the 80s. I'm a child of the yeah. 80s. So, Me too. Yeah, so um, things have changed a lot in, I'd say, even just the past 20 years. And and so I just, I try to teach my children, like, cow, I try to tell them that this is not their natural diet, that they like to be out eating grass, and this is why mommy does what she does. You know, and I figure when they're older, they are definitely going to see some of those documentaries. You know, I, I want them yeah. to know the reasons behind because there's ethical reasons as well. It's not just the health of their body, but it's the the humane, the way the animal was treated mm -hmm. and what what was in their diet. And also, you know, I want them to understand the reasoning behind that it's not just, I'm not just like this crazy health nut that's trying to like, you know, <laughs> because there really is a lot of outside influences on them. And it's really, really, I think being a parent and knowing this, knowing the profound effect food has on us is very challenging. And you'll find that too, um, Joe, as you raise your child, you'll find that it's very, very challenging. Yeah, well, let me, let me ask you about that. How long have you been eating this sort of way, this sort of primal, you know, grain-free sort of way? Um, just since 2011. I've okay. always been kind of a stickler to a healthy diet. You know, I, I, um breastfed both my children. I'm a breastfeeding counselor. I tried to start them on healthy, what I thought was healthy foods. Mm -hmm. um, lots of whole grains, lots of legumes. Mm -hmm. I did a trial of vegan. <laughs> you know, Just, all of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. You know, thinking, you know, main, a lot of mainstream, what you, what you think is healthy. But then when I really kind of did the research and it made sense to me, when I made those changes, I think the difference in how I felt mentally, physically, has mm -hmm. really been the deciding factor in how I want to raise my children. 
So was it a noticeable transition for your older boy when you made that switch? Because was, was he used to eating, you know, breads and pasta and certain, you know, um, even if it wasn't junk, junk food, was it, was it a hard transition for him? It wasn't. It still is. You know, they still ask mm -hmm. for bread. And, uh, you know, we, they still occasionally will get the, um, the sprouted grain breads. Mm -hmm. um, but, I, you know, I just do the best I can. I, you know, I try my hardest. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> It is a, um, it's a, they, they go through phases where they, you know, and I've asked him, I've said, do you want to get the school lunch on Friday, you know, so that cool. once yeah. a week, you, you know, because I'm, you know, I would say 85, 90, 10, primal. Yeah. I definitely yeah. can't have any gluten, but we do, you know, we do do occasional cheats. And I'm not mm -hmm. as, you know, I, I try to be as strict as I can with them, again, within the context of our culture. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah, but your yeah. younger one, like, this is all he really knows at, at this point. He just, he's basically f almost from day one been yes. eating this sort of primal diet. Yes. So it's, to him, it's, yes. it's probably easier, I would say. Yeah, and he, and he tends to be pickier. He's my little, I call him a fruititarian. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> he would live on berries. <laughs> wow. And he's okay. like me as a child. I was never a fan of meat. As a child, uh -huh. I was I was like big on textures. I was never a fan of meat. I would always, um, it's kind of a joke in our family. I would ask my mom, did this meat come from an animal or did it come from the grocery store? And they'd have to tell me it came from the grocery store. <laughs> wow. <laughs> because if I knew that it was the real animal, I just, and, and my little, my three-year-old is very much like that. Like he's, he loves animals. And he, mm -hmm. you know, he does it, like the thought of actually like putting two and two together, like I'm eating this animal yeah. is really, really hard for him. Oh, but that's he, interesting. Wow. Yeah. But he, you know, and he's like my little twin. He's exactly me as a <laughs> child in so many ways. So I can kind of see like how his little mind is working mm -hmm. and, and understand it. But he, um, you know, he's, he's getting there and, yeah. and he, you know, I, again, I just try to explain to them how it's how eating this food is going to help them be strong and how it's going to help their eyesight and their skin and this and you know I try to explain to them the positives about why why I choose what I choose mm -hmm. but it, it's hard it really yeah. is and you're gonna yeah. find that um, Joe having having a child you're yeah. gonna find you know just yeah. with outside Thanks. influences and yeah. birthday parties and even the public school you know I, I can't afford mm -hmm. to send them to private school mm -hmm as much as I would love to, and it's very challenging. Yeah. I mean, for us, we, you know, we, we're, we're hopeful that it'll be easier just because this is all he knows. He, he, yes. he, he doesn't know anything about junk food. I mean, he's only 16, you know, a little over 16 yeah. months, so he went right from breastfeeding and to... And their tastes are forming yeah, at, at yeah. such a young age, so if you're if they're starting off mm. with those kind of foods, that definitely makes a huge difference. I was so excited to give him his first food. His very first food, other than than breast milk, was egg yolk and and liver. Yes. <laughs> nice. and, it was, and I was so I was like so proud of that. He awesome. loved it. And to this avocado. Day, <laughs> yeah, avocado. To this day, he absolutely loves liver. That's how great. So like, um, Joe, how did you prepare? That's what I try to tell people is this is when their taste buds, this is when they're yeah. forming a taste for foods. And it's mm -hmm. so sad that the pediatricians will push that rice cereal. Yeah. I'm telling you that. Oh, it's I'm, awful, yeah. It he has is. Not had, yeah, he hasn't had any kind of cereal. The only thing, he's had some rice every now and then that I'll, I'll yeah. actually cook in bone broth. So it's like everything that he gets is, is, is real food. Um, oh, his junk great. food. His junk food is raisins. That's like that's his junk food. Like he'll walk around going raisins, raisins. <laughs> it's hysterical. And like that's our problem. That's our big problem. You know what I mean? Oh, that's the, if that's <laughs> so your big problem, cool. you're golden. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> totally, totally. So, um, yeah. So I, I, but yeah, we're we're sort of not dreading, but we're we're anticipating some resistance when he does start hanging out with other friends and and going to uh, you know school and things like that. So. You know, yes, outside kind of influences them. have been the yeah. biggest stress for me. Like literally, I have um, next door neighbors that Juice is a staple. So, and he's he's the same age as Joshua. He goes to kindergarten with him, and they play together all the time. And I love them. We're very, you know, we're very close to them. Mm -hmm. But every single day, he's coming over and saying, "Can I have a um, juice? Can I have an Italian ice? Can I have a, right. you know?" And so it's really, really challenging. 
And then, oh, so you know, the neighbor's the, kid is coming to your house, in other words? Or? Well, Joshua was <laughs> playing with him, and then he's right. having that that kind of snack, and so Joshua was asking. Oh, and, you know, when they yeah. get a taste for it, it's really, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. real fun yeah. that They're no like, matter what like you do at home, because <laughs> I have tried, I wouldn't give him, you know, Joshua, when he, I wouldn't give him any sweets up until, he, you know, he was two when he probably had his first taste of something sweet, mm -hmm. and... So, you know, I've, you know, I've been very, you know, because I've always been really health conscious and I don't want them to, their taste buds to, I guess, right. grow the taste for Get that. Get used to that, yeah. Get yeah, used yeah. to that taste. But once they have it, <laughs> it you'll right? find. And then you can't, yeah. you really, you know what, I, you have to kind of find humor in it too. Because mm -hmm. it's so, and I know I've said this like 50 times, but it's very challenging. Yeah, it's very yeah, challenging. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, and I think that's why I have such a huge following on Primal Bliss because people want to mm -hmm. make those changes. They want to feed their children this way. They, you know, every, they want the best for their children, but culturally it is so hard. Yeah. So yeah. just surrounding yourself with people in the same community um, and then mm -hmm. just, I think also doing the best you can at home. I think if they have that base at home, that's the biggest thing because mom and dad are who they look up to. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like your parents, what they're eating is what eventually I think is going to set in as the norm for them. Right. And so I feel like as long as I do the best I can at home, then mm -hmm. when they're out and they have those foods and they see, and then they have a better understanding of how those foods are going to make them feel mm -hmm. too. Yeah. You know what I mean? When they, cause it's, you know, everybody's having juice at a birthday party to say no to to them, I think, is causes more of an effect on them than just letting them have it and letting them feel how it makes them feel. Right, 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 right. So, so sometimes it's better to just sort of give them a little bit of rope and and let yes. them explore some some foods that maybe aren't perfect, but let them explore yes. how that makes them feel. Well, well because then you also have to take into consideration their the friendships that you have with the other parents. Mm -hmm. And when you're going to that party and you're saying, my, my child can't have this, my child can't have that, then you mm -hmm. start to lose friendships that way too, which is also right. another challenge. How's his school in, um, with, with food and, and health and wellness? How, how, does, how does that play into to everything? Oh my gosh. I went to have lunch with him once at his school and I was literally horrified at what these mm. children were eating. Yep. Absolutely horrified, and it's heartbreaking to say the least. It's heartbreaking, and I think you did a post on this recently that I shared that I really enjoyed yeah. on um, seeing. You, yeah, you. seeing <laughs> it. It was you know one girl was literally eating a eating a slushy for lunch. Yeah, mm. yeah. and um, just like the everything is pa packaged and processed and sugar laden and. Um, this is all, you know, those yogurts with the food dye and loads of sugar. Mm -hmm. and, and the sad part is, is that a lot of these parents truly believe that because there it says yogurt that it's healthy, right. mm -hmm. or you know, organic pop tarts. A pop tart is a pop tart. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Just because it's an organic pop tart doesn't mean that it's healthy. Well, yeah. even even in the context of um, Trader Joe's, you know. Mm -hmm. Even though it's Trader Joe's, doesn't mean everything that Trader Joe's sells is healthy. And there's a lot of, yeah, a lot of processed foods. So I think a lot of times, or even the farmers market. When I go to the farmers market, I see people carrying baskets full of desserts because they're home baked. Mm -hmm. But it's still, you know, I think a lot of times, and and there's just so many mixed messages. It's really, it's really challenging. Mm -hmm. yeah. It and really is. You, you're right. It, it, it's very sad to see the, the lunch tables because I, I, I see kids every day eating. It's, 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 heartbreaking is the best way to say it because they think, they, they act, when they're eating it, they look happy and they look like they're enjoying it, which I, I, they probably are because it probably tastes pretty good. Yeah. But <laughs> we, you know, we know what it's doing to their bodies and, and where it came from. There was no, there was no type of love um, present when that food was made. Mm -hmm. And I think, yeah. when, especially when kids eat, they need that. They need that 
yeah. their, their parents' hands, touching the food and making the food and preparing it with, with care and with love. What those whatever it was just like slapped on their tray and like off you go. There's mm -hmm. there's no energy there, no love yes. there with the food. And also the effect that it has on their gut health. You know, a lot of times, I think parents don't even understand um, the connection. Do you hear whispering? <laughs> Let me fix this. That's I don't know. I think you've maybe you're haunted over there. <laughs> so. um, no, I was just gonna going. say a lot of times they um, they don't see the connection between um, the the effect that food's gonna have on them long term in, in terms mm. of their gut health and autoimmune disease and inflammation and heart disease and these type of things that don't really show up in a child. So they mm. think, oh, they're fine, they're healthy. You know, they had their well visit and they're healthy. They don't really, they don't really understand the things that I think we as um, people who are kind of educated in this type of um, food philosophy understand how the effect that that food actually has on the child long term, on their gut health and on their um, disease prevention and that type of thing. Yes, and I think what that post that you were referring to, Catherine, that that what motivated me to to write those things, which was basically what I was saying was, I'm a teacher and I'm a music teacher, so I get to see kids of all ages throughout the day. And they grow up literally in my classroom. I see them from kindergarten and I have them in my classroom until they're ready to graduate in fifth grade. And I see them from little kids who are vibrant and energetic. They have beautiful glowing skin. They're young, they're athletic. And by the time they hit fifth grade, and it's just, it was just very, this is the first year they're really noticing that my fifth graders are breaking out with acne and they're having, they have bags under their eyes and they just move with such, like, just lethargic, you know. It was, it's just a very sad transition to see this bouncing little kid grow into a 10-year-old who, who just looks very sad and, and unhealthy. Absolutely. And I yeah. think it's more, it's more than just food. I think that a lot of these kids are, their schedules are very packed tightly. I don't think they're getting to bed on time. I don't think that they're spending yes. enough, enough time with their families. That's another yes. thing that I try yeah, to focus on um, with, my, with my blog and my website is um, not just primal eating, but raising primally inspired children. Yeah. I think that um, children are way overscheduled. Yes. I don't sign my kids up for anything at this point. I'm going to go as long as I can mm -hmm. <laughs> without it. But you're right. You know, it's not only what they're eating. It's the it's the video games and the iPods and the iPads and the TVs and the um, and getting them getting them ready for standardized testing. Oh my standardized God. testing. Oh my gosh, I could don't go on for yeah. hours about that. <laughs> so Let me tell I. you, that is like the bane mm -hmm. of my existence right mm -hmm. now. But you know, just all of that comes into play, and it has a you know, it has a perf it does have a, a really big effect on them. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and those are I try to. I'm always making my kids play outside. I think out outdoor play is huge, and imagination yeah. and creativity and um, all those types of things all come into play. And also, you know, we we live now where we're so divided from our families from the grandparents and the aunts and the uncles, whereas mm -hmm. back in like the tribal days, they, and they say it takes a village to raise a child, and it really does. All the, everybody kind of helped pitch in and everybody kind of raised the children together, and they were outdoors and they were, you know, exploring and learning and everybody was kind of helping everybody. But now we're kind of isolated. We're kind of, it's mom and the kids or dad and the kids, and it's, mm -hmm. it's, it's, um, there's a lot of pressure on the parents um, and so many outside influences like is he signed up for soccer yet? Is he signed right. up for t-ball? Yeah. Um, make sure you, is your kid in this? Is your kid in that? And um, there's whole, like crazy amounts of homework and these kids are so over scheduled and exhausted mm -hmm. and the, you know they're not having time to actually like be kids. Be kids yeah. and, and actually yeah. use their imagination and and like play these types of games where my sister and I, oh my gosh, we would spend hours outside 
making up these ridiculous games and yeah. using our imaginations and yeah. telling stories and like going into different places in your mind and I think it's so imperative to their development mm -hmm. and it's just it's really it's really kind of sad it's culturally that's where I have the, <laughs> the hardest time raising yeah. children because yeah, my schools, mindset is yeah. so different than everyone mm -hmm. else's but yeah I have to fit into this culture because this is where I live and right there's not, you know, so it's been, that's been my biggest challenge. And that's why I wanted to create Primal Bliss Nutrition and, and help other parents, you know, help other parents. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because school's trying to get them to fit perfectly into that little square peg. Oh, my know? gosh. So, Absolutely. I totally the, agree. If I were to, if I went, I went to school for music education. If I went for just a, um, a classroom teacher, I think I would have left teaching a yeah. few years ago. I, I love that I can teach music, which has all those qualities that you listed before, Catherine, the imagination and the creativity mm -hmm. and the movement, you know. I allow my kids free reign, you know, just to, to explore. But another thing I notice is when we're doing something like dancing, you know, because I'll get up and just just dance and be silly. <laughs> I'm oh, when up. you come to Saratoga, we're dancing. Yeah, right. <laughs> okay. Don't let it tell me twice, Catherine. Karaoke and dancing. <laughs> but I'm up dancing, you know, doing my thing, and I look behind me and all the kids are wiped out. You know, they're out of breath. <laughs> they're on the floor. I'm like, kids, we need to sit down and have a talk. <laughs> because... Mm -hmm. You know, the the physical activity is not where it should be. And like what yes. you were saying, my brothers and my sister and I, we would go outside and just we would, my parents we, we, would lock us outside. Yeah, yeah, we would yeah. play in the dirt. We would just yep. run around, yes. play tag. You know, and you know what? That's what they love to do. When whenever they feel, whenever I feel like my kids are overwhelmed and just like, oh my gosh, like they don't know what to do with themselves, and they're asking for this and they're asking for that. I just send them outside and playing in the sandbox it totally resets them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean it's striking. It's uh, I was going to say it's striking growing up and always being outside and the the whole neighborhood being alive and kids everywhere. And now you drive around it's like you never see kids outside. It's, no, it's, I think it's, mine are like <laughs> mine and my neighbors no. kids. We call them the nature kids cuz they're out barefoot. <laughs> They're out nice. barefoot and they're just out. Yeah. And I am constantly sending them outside. Because you mm -hmm. know why? I did it as a child and I know the, how much it helped me as a person just to mm -hmm. develop. I think you, you become a better person when, you, when you're able to use your imagination and be able to develop that right side of your brain more. Mm -hmm. And just be able to make those different connections and separate yourself from the craziness of you know, how things are now. Right. Any time that they can take to separate themselves from that, I think, is huge. It's so important. What else? What else can you do to sort of balance that that stringent sort of school environment? Like, what are the, what other things can you do with with kids at home to nurture that right side of the brain, that creativity? Um, we do lots of crafts. <laughs> I am not crafty at all. My sister is the one that just <laughs> called. <laughs> she she always gives me lots of ideas, but um, mm -hmm. they love to do craft projects. I'm lucky that my older son Joshua is very artistic, and whenever mm -hmm. I can tell, whenever he's stressed from being at school all day, or even before he goes to school in the morning, he runs and grabs a piece of paper and a pen and he draws, and he'll sit nice. and draw for hours. But from mm -hmm. a very young age, we were doing lots of craft projects. Um, cool. And then again, I have, I'm lucky that we have woods in the backyard, mm -hmm. and I'm very big on hiking. I live up in the Adirondacks. Mm -hmm. I want to be yeah. a <laughs> 46, 46 or what they call it, hike all the high peaks in the Adirondacks, and I want my children oh, to wow. do that. Cool. So yeah. I, take them, I take them fishing, I take them hiking, um, try to be outdoors as much as possible. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's huge, is just having an... Un having, um, an understanding of nature and an appreciation for mm -hmm. nature. Yep. Mm -hmm. um, they love to figure out what the name of different plants are. Geocaching is good if you can take them geocaching. I do that. 
What, oh yeah, I love to do that. What is and that? Gee, that's so funny. That's and, hysterical. And you can involve your children and all that yeah. kind of stuff. I think. So let's geek. Let's geek out for a second and and tell Eric what geocaching is yeah, because what is that? it's the geekiest, most awesome <laughs> thing ever. I can't wait. I, I totally want to do it. I've been doing it for like ten years. It, it's like my really? secret little See, I just copy. learned yeah. about it a couple years ago. But you oh, hide man. like a little treasure in a box. You literally hide a little treasure, and then these mm -hmm. treasures are kind of mapped out. And so you have to try to, and kids love this, because they love to go on treasure hunts. Mm -hmm. So you go on these trails. and, and Who's um, You use a GPS, them? Eric. You actually, you actually take the coordinates using a, a handheld GPS, and you go onto a website. And you you load in all the like if you look right now on Long Island, Eric, yeah, yeah. there's like thousands hidden all different places Wait, in parks. There's like fun little on, boxes all around right now. Yeah, yeah usually there's like yeah, totally. If you like literally, especially where you are, yeah, yeah. there's so many hiking trails out what, where, like, where you what are. What people put in the treasures? Like what is it? Just like oh, just little, little, like kids stuff, toys, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Where, it's so okay. Much fun. Where do I have to go? I need I need to know. Go to geocaching.com. Exactly. And it is yeah. actually it's such a great example. And it's such a great way to <laughs> not only kids but adults. I mean, I, like I said, I've been doing it for so long. Is it, it cash just, or cash? cash? Like cash as like in C A C H. C A C H, yeah. Okay. Yeah. C A C H I N G. Geocaching. And so, hiking, um, they kids love to go hiking. You know, they yeah. love to explore and mm -hmm. they love to learn. And I think when when learning isn't forced on them like it is kind of like in this yeah. structured kind of way but it's their inquisitive they're asking their own inquisitive questions about different things mm -hmm. they actually love learning children yeah. love learning if they're yeah. le you know if they're taught in a certain way mm -hmm. um, and they love to explore their environment they love to ask questions and get answers and so you know I try to do all of that with them um, when I can mm -hmm. um, so do you notice or do you sort of anticipate that there may be some rebellion <laughs> from your kids, you know, in, in school? Or did, like, are you noticing any of that at this point? You know, I, I feel like Joshua does not like school, and he always asks me if I, could, if I will homeschool him. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask you about that next. <laughs> yes, yeah. Oh, my gosh, yeah, if I yeah. could, I would. If, mm -hmm. You know what I mean? If I could, um, unfortunately, yeah. the circumstances where I'm in, I can't. But if I could, I, I definitely yeah. would yeah. homeschool. Um, he he doesn't love it. You know, I just mm -hmm. try to explain to him that this is where he's learning, mm -hmm. and you know, I try to do. I think again, and you know what? I have um, friends who have an older daughter in college and a younger daughter who's graduating soon who's mm -hmm. very much like me in terms of how they wanted to raise their children and they wanted to right. do this and they did the best they could within their means and they said really the biggest thing the, where they learn the most is home the home environment mm -hmm. and the things that you do at home are going to matter the most yeah um so i think yeah. All these other experiences are going to teach them what life is like out there because they are going to have to face that and deal with that. But I think as long as I can do the best I can at home to give them um, that that confidence and that security and that um, you know appreciation for nature, um, appreciation mm -hmm. for animals and how ethically they were treated. You know, just all those kind of things kind of tied together. I think they, I think they learn the best at home for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, um, let's talk a little bit more about the food. I mean, we've, I think we've all sort of heard these stories where kids bring these healthy lunch. I've kind of heard it in this Weston Prize Paleo circles where they bring like this really healthy lunch to school, and that you know, the, there's a teacher or an aide or something that sees the lunch and and believes that it's not healthy because it doesn't have you know, 8,000 servings of whole grains in there. Ugh. You know, have you, have you reached, have you, have you had any resistance Thankfully, with that yet? no. Yeah. There's a lunch aide that kind of, I guess, works at the school. She works in the office, and she's also a lunch aide, and she, she's yes. actually not that friendly. I guess she kind of yells at the kids, and they, <laughs> <laughs> Josh was afraid of her. But she always tells me when I see her, Joshua has the best lunches ever, oh, and he good. eats everything, and we're mm -hmm. so proud of him, and everyone talks about his lunches, so nobody wow. has said anything about the absence of whole grains, um, thankfully. Oh, thank God. But I have read yeah. about that, and a lot, I yeah. think a lot of people 
deal with that. And they have had a health education at school, which mm -hmm. really frustrates me because they follow Michelle Obama's right. how many servings of whole grains a day mm -hmm. and how healthy it is. And um, this is, I feel like it sends mm -hmm. them mixed messages. Right. And that's really challenging for me. That's, I think the most challenging thing for me is, is definitely the mixed messages mm -hmm. um, between other families that they see and what they're serving their children and the schools and what they're serving their children and the, um, and they don't understand, well, how come we don't do, how come we don't have that? And, you know, so that's, again, one of the big challenges as a parent trying to raise, mm -hmm. I guess, primal or um, paleo type children. Right, right. Eric, does it, does it, from from your perspective, you kind of have a behind the scenes, and you're you're on like a wellness board at your school too, right? Yeah. Uh huh. And it, it, have you discussed trying to make certain changes, and and what, actually, how has that been? Yeah. Totally, totally, definitely. I I went into my principal's office the other day, you know, all trying to be charming, and I was like, look. <laughs> I I'm want, walking in my they computer. have this thing called pasta night at my school where it's like this, all the families come together and they, they just make pounds and pounds and pounds of pasta and they eat it and it's like, it's almost like a fundraiser. So I went up to my, te to, to my principal, I was like, look, I have a mission to get rid of pasta night. And her face went like, really quickly because they know it's something that the community loves and I was like look I'm destined to get rid of this thing and I told her that I would it would be so much better if we had more of like a farm to table night kind of thing going on yes and yes. she loved the idea once I sold it to her she's like you know what that's an awesome idea and even if people aren't the parents aren't backing you right now we will definitely even if they don't want to get rid of pasta night completely we will definitely do a farm to table night and I'm hoping that will replace pasta night because <laughs> it just sounds that's awesome. Wow. Just yeah, sounds that sounds great. Horrible pasta night. It just sounds and Catherine bad. just Catherine's just sitting there going for a walk. I you know what? I have to get the cord to my <laughs> to my computer because the red light's on. So yeah, I'd actually uh -oh. did take you for a walk. <laughs> nice, nice. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. So I'm on a mission to get rid of pasta night and to and to replace it with a farm to table, almost like a like an educational kind of night where, where perhaps the farmers can come and talk about the farm and talk about the food and how they oh, plant nice. it and 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 make it a, a community project that's also educational and healthy at the same time. So that's great, yeah. yeah. Next year I plan to get this going and to get it done nice. at my school. Totally. Yeah, the schools need need that. The world they the do. world needs more Eric Hulse. <laughs> <laughs> oh, stop it! That's because awesome. I, I That's don't awesome. think I don't think it's going to be possible at this point to try to change what they're putting in the cafeteria because right. there's so many there's so much state involvement with that. Yeah, and just yeah. like you were saying, Catherine, it's so ingrained in our society that that would be such a big deal to do. I mean, look at Jamie Oliver. He's like a huge mm -hmm. star. And look at all the backlash he got from the schools right. he's trying right. to go into and change, you know? So I think starting something like a like a farm to table night at my school is definitely the way yeah. to go and that's a great idea. Saying goodbye to pasta night. Catherine, can we talk about um your your breastfeeding coaching? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Um well I studied can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, we can hear you. Yep. Okay, because you kind of froze up for a second. Yep. I studied um, through the University of San Diego Extension. They have a um, uh, breastfeeding educator counselor certification. So it was a, um, a semester-long program um, online, and I worked at my own pace. And I became a certified, I guess, educator counselor. Mm -hmm. So, And I'm also um, a counselor through Breastfeeding USA, which is um, an, a fairly new um, breastfeeding organization that helps um, runs breastfeeding support groups and helps women with issues that they may encounter. Um, so I do classes and um, for expectant parents and I also do um, uh, breastfeeding counseling as needed mm -hmm. when, you know if I get a phone call or yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, what are what are some of the uh, the biggest challenges that 
that new moms come across with that? I, I think um, definitely overcoming the obstacles they face in the hospital. There's a lot of misinformation out there. Mm -hmm. And also, um, <laughs> my gosh, and I think one of the biggest things, too, is back in, the, in our tribal days, in our primal days, Women were women always saw each other breastfeeding. Um, um, parent children were raised seeing their parents breast seeing their not their parents seeing their mothers breastfeed uh -huh. and their aunts breastfeed <laughs> and their relatives and everyone kind of did out in the open. So it was always seen. So it, you, it's a learned behavior. Mm -hmm. So I think that because we're always covering it up and hiding it and making it so taboo that right. now in, in in our culture today. We don't know how to do it. We're just, mm -hmm. it's not, there's no, we, we put the child to the breast and we have no idea what to do. We don't, we, we don't understand their feet, their cues, um, learn, we were taught some horrible advice from past generations on what to do in, in um, certain circumstances and it's all kind of based on a bottle feeding um, mm -hmm. culture. So yeah. we don't understand how to read their cues. We don't understand how exactly how to place them. And so there's just a lot of things going against mothers. And there's a lot of um, really bad books out there and a lot of really bad advice. And we just, we don't listen to our instinct. We don't even know how to, I think, at this point, yeah. culturally. Yeah. We don't even know how to. Um, we're so nervous and we're so overwhelmed. And we have so many messages coming at us. So it's, it's definitely become a challenge. You're you're taking a class right now to be a nutritional therapist. Where where do you see yourself going in this, you know, uh, in this business? Where where do you want to take take all this? Well, right now I'm working on an ebook on feeding babies, on starting nice. solids and what foods to offer, which I think is very important. So I'd like to author. I want to um, definitely publish some books. Um, and I want to take on clients, and I've already had a, um, a holistic doctor approach me, a holistic, I guess it's called, functional health. medicine doctor, okay, yeah, approach yeah. me and say, give me her card and say she's looking for nutritionists all the time. Sweet. Yeah, so, so I'm, and then there's a chiropractor in the area that I'm friends with, and so I'm hoping to kind of, you know, do some work in the area that way, and then definitely expand online and, um, I also just want to say that I think this is such an amazing community, the paleo primal yeah. kind of community. I, I love how we all support each other. I love how it's not competitive, and mm -hmm. I've met some amazing, amazing people. And just literally, I just started in, in um, February of this year, so it's been three months. And the the amount of people that I've met and the, mm -hmm. you know, just the the help that I've received and the mentoring and people are, it's just a great community. I feel very, very lucky. Yeah, no, it's definitely awesome. Very supportive. And, and, uh, I'm totally grateful for, for all you're both, too. you both keep freezing up again. <laughs> yeah, I know. I think we're just about to lose it. So let's just let's yes, wrap it up. Yes. Thanks, Catherine. We will talk to you soon. <laughs> all right. Great okay. episode. Well, cool. Okay. Well, once again, you could find, uh, me at wellnesspunks.com. EricHulse.com and Catherine is at uh, PrimalBlissNutrition.com and everyone keep an eye out for my Primal Cooking Workshop which will be uh, coming out later this summer. Like I said, I did a segment with George Bryant of Civilized Caveman today. Uh, Eric's going to uh, do, uh, do some stuff. He's either going to cook or, or host yep. or something. John is going to, we got a really cool segment with John Randall's coming up. It's going to be all about ice cream, teaching you how to cook some primal ice cream. Um, Catherine's going to do a segment on, on feeding uh, feeding kids. So there's going to be a lot of stuff for everyone. Some, some, uh, some uh, very well-known people are going to be involved with that. So super excited. Keep a lookout for that. And uh, that'll, that'll do it. <laughs> Have a good night, everyone. On today's show, we found. Try that again. <laughs> I love that I can edit this after the fact because I always. That's great. Screw up the intro. <laughs> On today's show, we welcome. Damn. Again. <laughs> Maybe I drank too much. <laughs> oh, I love it. Hold on. Okay. On today's show, we. <laughs>
God damn it. <laughs> I got this. I got this. Hold it Do you down. have to include the down. outtakes? It's kind of funny, man. Yeah, we got like the crazy lag going, but I just want to get this one more question in. What's you're, like the... you're kind of robotic. <laughs> was it the, first, the most important first three foods? Yeah, let's let's just say that the first the first three foods. <laughs> Can you say it one more time, Mr. Roboto? Dummy, dummy, got dummy. It's perfect. It's so perfect. <laughs>